find out all my boxes and stuff. I actually have that, Brother Burke, and I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, Barry gave it to me where he took the notes down and went to te Mike teach Brother and Sister Burke. I don't mean to disrespect him by calling him Mike. He is Brother Burke and she's Sister Burke. And, and God filled them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and now he's blessed their lives and he's come to bless you tonight with, with what God has done from him. The Bible says we're made overcomers by two things. By the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Tonight you're going to experience what the power of the Holy Ghost can do. Brother Mike Burke, if you'd come. Amen. I thank you for coming. The Lord laid this on his heart. And we're going to be a part of it. Praise the Lord. Let's do that unto the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Can you do that for like 30, 40 minutes? Let's do that for a little while. Man, man. You can be seated. David had to play for a guy one time. King. Before he was king, he had to play for a guy one time. Man. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. Amen. Are y'all bored? Amen. Wow. God filled somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He sure did. Hallelujah. He sure did. Hallelujah. Wow. My God, God's going to do something in this place tonight for some people. Amen. Some of you are very upset because the people you've invited, amen, didn't show up. Do you know that everybody that's here right now is ordained of God to be here? That's right. That's right. We're going to get involved in some stuff here in a second. Hallelujah. Give honor to your pastor, amen, his wife, his family, amen. I give honor to Bishop McKinney, amen. Believe it or not, I preached my first sermon right here. Right here. How many years ago was that? I don't know. Aunt Tammy, you were here that night. Yeah, you were. I remember. You came. Amen. Years ago. Hallelujah. I, I've called two people before in my life to tell them that I uh, needed to come preach for them. And one was about 11 years ago and the other was for tonight. Man. And, uh, <laughs> oh God. I give honor to my pastor tonight, Brother Williams, my bishop. Thankful for his covering in my life. Amen. Excited about what God's doing in these last days. So uh, we're just going to get right involved in what the Lord wants to do tonight. Amen. And uh, he's, already, he's already started. Usually I have to get up and say, listen, I'm not going to sow any seed until some folks plow some ground, but you guys did some plowing already. So uh, I, I normally preach as hard of you, as you praised in worship. I figure you don't want no more of what you put into it, so there ain't no sense in me getting up here acting like a goofball if you don't want nothing from God. I'm very blunt. I'm going to go ahead and not apologize, but give you the little fine print warning that, hey amen, I'm going to say something you don't like tonight, but it's not me, it's God. That's I didn't step on your toes. I'm aiming for your heart tonight. Hey amen. God's going to help some people in this place. Hey amen. He's filled someone with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And and now God wants to do so. I, I feel, I have liberty, right? I feel like I'm at home. I'm here. That's what some of you need to say tonight in your spirit. 
When I pulled up in this town, you know what I said? Devil! I'm here! You don't get that. I'm here. Some of you need to make that proclamation in your spirit tonight that you're here. Devil, I'm here. Some of you so beat down. Hallelujah. That's going to change. Amen. That's going to change. Amen. We're going to help. We're going to help some people tonight. Amen. Not me. The Lord is. Amen. I want to do something right now that um, I just feel to do it in my spirit. And that's what I usually do. Hallelujah. So God's filled somebody with the Holy Ghost. Now He wants to heal somebody. Is that all right? So about 10 days ago, one night, it was a Monday night, Sunday night, it was a Sunday night. And uh, how many of you believe that young men shall see visions? And I, uh, I was caught up in a vision. And uh, I'm not doing this to put anybody on the spot, but Aunt Tammy, I want you to come up here. I was caught up in a vision, and uh, I believe in walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. And uh, I was in a vision, and the Lord showed me that my aunt had a, something in her stomach that uh, was painful, or something wrong, I don't know, if ulcer, tumor something in this vision and I laid hands on her and God healed her miraculously in this vision I uh, so I wake up the next morning and uh, going through my day and the Lord threw that vision right back out again the second time and he said are you going to call and I said yeah yeah. (laughs) when daddy speaks I listen and uh so I called and I did all the normal stuff we do when we call people and we're like, oh Lord, I hope they don't think I'm crazy. I said, hey, how you doing? How's things going? Going great. Love you. Miss you. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I said, how's your stomach? She said, what do you mean? I said, how's your stomach? And she said, well, I've been treated for this. I haven't talked to her. I don't know nothing about it. And that didn't work. Now they're treating me for this. But there's something wrong. And uh, I called mom and told her, I said, let her know you ain't told me nothing. And I told her the vision that God gave me that I was going to lay my hand on her. And when I did, God was going to heal her. Some of you look at me like a... I don't... Anyway. So... Uh, I've asked her to come tonight. It's hard to meet up with people. And I thought, what better place for God to heal somebody than the house of the Lord? Anybody still believe that God's a healer? Does anybody believe that God can still speak to His people? Oh! Alabashai! Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So before we... I like when we say, Man, God really took over our service. What in the world was we doing before He did take over that service? (laughs) Well, God really started moving there to the... Well, what in the world was we involved in before God started taking over? Hallelujah. We're just going to claim it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it's going to happen. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father God, right now. Lord, I...
Ghost. Go ahead and worship the Lord right now. I don't have no, nothing I can say or do can make God any bigger than what He already is tonight. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of the Lord. That's all right. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We declare it. It's happened already. It's done. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord. That's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's done. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to, we're just going to go obey the Lord. Amen. We're going to see him do some great, some great things tonight. Man, he's going to help a lot of you. Here's what's going to happen. We're, we're going to, we're going to be involved in this service and God's going to do some powerful things. You can be seated. Amen. We'll need you standing up right now. We're going to, we're going to proclaim some things and take, take some things. Amen. And we're going to, we're going to throw it out there in the spiritual realm and, and God's just going to overcome some stuff. Amen. In, in this community, in this area, amen, this church. And what's going to happen is, is after this service, you're going to see an influx of people that come in this place that are, are hungry for the things of God. Amen. And God's preparing this church. Amen. God is preparing this church for the end time revival that He has promised in His book. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. The book of 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read some scripture. That way you'll tell everybody I preached. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You don't have to stand. I just want to share something with you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold, but I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imagination. So that child that's lost and going to go to hell, that right now is not living for God. You yourself are making yourself sick to your stomach, thinking that God can't save them. Casting down imaginations. So if you're imagining that your child's lost and there's no hope, and you're hopeless, is that coming from God or is that coming from Satan? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of whom? Christ. Amen. Amen. Turn with me now to the book of Romans. Chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for, the, for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Sis, you can you can quit. I'll let you stop early. We'll still pay you the same, but you can go ahead. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not buying time. I'm waiting on the Lord. Amen. Uh, I used to be a preacher, and God turned me into a minister. I'm not here to preach to you tonight. I'm here to not just to preach to you, but I'm also here to minister, amen, to you. Is that okay? 
And when you minister, sometimes you operate in the fivefold, uh, you know, ministry, and uh, uh, you operate in the spirit. And sometimes that bothers people, but that's all right. The devil's a liar. Amen. The truth's not in him. For we we wrestle not with flesh and blood. But you know, I'm just going to do what I'm what I'm just called to do, and I'm just going to do it anyhow. Brother, uh, let's see here, Sister Kaiser, won't you come up here? Amen. So. Um, There's a hopeless feeling, not in this church, but in this community. Just kind of hang out in the altar area for a little bit. There's a, there's a, a hopeless, like a hopelessness in, in this area. There really is. I don't just show up, Pastor, I just don't go to towns and drive straight into town and go straight to the church and jump out the car. I was here early. And I was riding the streets, praying in tongues, seeking after some things in the Spirit and trying to figure out what in the world Pastor keen has been dealing with. And the Spirit, one of the strongholds of this community is hopelessness. No hope. You don't have to believe me, just, but just pray a little bit and then drive around the city and look at people's faces and watch what's going on when they're in their backyards throwing down a few beers and smoking a joint and, and you know, selling crack on the street corner and bumping a little meth and, and, and all that. I see it every time I roll through this area. It's here. It's in southeast Missouri. It's, it's, it's hopelessness. And, and a lot of times um, that, that hopelessness is what, what uh, people get that spirit locked upon them. And because of that, they, ha- they then have a couple options. They can either turn to things that they can physically see to fix that situation in their heart and their spirit... Or they can have hope in something that they cannot see. And, and it's an option. It's, it's, it's self-will. It's, a, it's something that every individual has in this church, in this, in this community. Uh, and, and when we get this feeling, listen, you're, it's not your flesh making you feel the way that you feel. We just said, we just said that we're, we're not fighting a fight of flesh and blood. But we're fighting a spiritual fight. That thing's going to try to jump on you to make you feel hope. You've been feeling hopeless this whole service. I want you to lift your hands. And here's what happens. When we get that feeling, we then feel like we're unworthy or we've done something. You've been feeling like you've done something wrong in your life and, and, and that's what's causing situations in your life. You ain't done nothing wrong. We ain't. Uh, I'm going to help somebody tonight through the power of God. Some of you sitting there like wooden Indians, y'all going to be the first ones on your face here in a second when the, when the Shekinah glory grabs a hold of you. That's all right. Go ahead and pray. Pray in that. Pray in that right now. <laughs> yeah, something just came in here that you didn't even recognize just then. Alaba <laughs> Shatta. I, I can pick on Sister Kaiser because I know her. But some of you are fixing to run up here in a second. And so we get hopeless. And we get this hopelessness. And, and, and instead of, of turning to God so many times, we, we, we get such under a spiritual attack that we have no freedom, we have no joy, we have no liberty. Let, let me tell you something. When, you, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost falls upon you and you receive the Holy Ghost, when that first chord is struck on that guitar or that first beat is beat on them drums, let me tell you something. If, if, the same, if you got the same Holy Ghost I got. I'm fixing to lose control. You're not going to keep me in a seat. That's the first indicator that you're bound by something that something's got a hold of you and it's not God. When you don't have any victory, any joy, any praise, any worship, and you need to get out of your seat and you need to just cut loose. Yeah. The problem is we get we get too used to God's presence. Oh God, I better calm down. That's it. Go ahead. So what happens is 
when these things jump upon us, when we when we don't realize, we everybody in here knows who Jesus is. But the problem is, I'm telling you, I came here a few months ago and I preached it. It was a word from the Lord. And some of you didn't get it, and that's why it's still lingering around here. The problem is, is it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't that you don't know who He is. The problem is you just haven't recognized yet who you are. So when that thing tries to grab a hold of you, get, get it. I take dominion and authority right now through this That's all it takes. It's all it takes. Some of you have been under such spiritual attack and that's the reason why you can't have any freedom or liberty is because when something comes up against you, you don't turn toward the hope of God. You turn to what you can see and what you can grab a hold of and what you can feel. It might be a man. It might be a woman. It might be some meth. It may be a piece of crack. It may be a joint. It may be a beer. But I'm trying to tell somebody here tonight when life struggles come against you, baby, it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. You don't need to keep turning to the things that you can see, feel, and touch. You need to turn to some hope that's in Christ Jesus. You need to turn to God. You need to turn loose of what... That's all right. Keep praying in the Spirit, sister. You know, the problem is, is we let this Jezebel spirit grab a hold of us and control our life. When we came in there, listen, ain't no spirit that's not the Holy Ghost going to tell me how to worship God. I'm telling you right now, nothing's going to change. And some of you got so much shame in your life. Oh, God, I'm in the Holy Ghost. You got some... Okay, I'm going to say it again so you all will believe me. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Some of you have got so much shame in your life because of your past. You know God don't remember none of it as long as you got it under the blood. And I can care less what my brother or my sister thinks. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to pray. Yeah, I messed up this morning. But you know what? I pleaded the blood. Now worship Him when there's no shame. Well, you used to do that. That's right. I used to. It may even be a couple hours ago, but I used to. Shame's killing the church. Shame is killing the church. Some of you are beat down. Some of you are so broken. Some of you, you know why? Because it is shame and it's hopelessness. And I'm not talking about what you're doing. Smoking the joint, drinking the beer, and sleeping around and all that stuff. That's not the problem. That's what you're doing. The problem is, why are you doing it? I'm here to tell you tonight. The reason why is because you ain't got the Spirit of God just like you need the Spirit of God in your life. Yeah, you get the Holy Ghost like I got. When hell comes against me, that that lets me know I'm doing something right. Yeah. 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 If you ain't struggling, you ain't living for the Lord. If you're not having any tribulation or trials, that means you're on the wrong team. Well, I failed and I did this and I did that. My God, join the club. Who hasn't fell short of the glory of God? How many people's got the Holy Ghost? And then within a week or two, they walk right out of the church. And because they can't be perfect, and because, listen, some of you Pentecostals, you're harder on them folks than God is. Because 
of how hard you are on them, you make them harder on their self than what God is. I read somewhere where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty. If it, no, 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 no. The reason why we struggle, though, is because we want to operate in the flesh. We want to operate in the flesh. Because we want to see things in the flesh. Sister, when I lay my hand on you, you're not going to see the situation in the flesh anymore. You're going to, God's fixing to give you something powerful. You're going to see something that you've been praying for in the Spirit. And because of that, God's going to do something for you in the name of Jesus. Right now. That's it. Show her, Lord. Show her, Lord. Show it to her. Show it to her right now. Show it to her. Show it to her. Show it to her. Show it to her. I'm not shaking her. That's the Holy Ghost. I just... No, 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 no. See, the problem is some of you are so fleshly, you don't believe in the supernatural things of God. And that's why you turn to things that are not of God when you go through spiritual problems. Yeah, that's all right. Go ahead and get the victory right now. If nobody else gets the victory tonight, this sister is fixing to get it. Yeah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Yeah. I like it when I... <laughs> that's all right. Go ahead. That, that's, that, that's what God's doing. This is what you're doing. That's what God's doing. This is what you're doing. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so things come our way and life doesn't go exactly how we plan it to go and things pop up in our lives that we don't understand and then that gives the opportunity for the enemy to come speak to us and, and, and then we've got a decision to make some of you have been sitting on these pews sitting in these chairs your whole life and you've never really made a decision that you're going to live for God more than anything else and that's why your life is like this that's why all hell comes against you in one minute you're shouting and the next minute you're done back one minute you're running and speaking in tongues and by the next service you done let up and gave up on God I'm trying to tell you tonight that the enemy is a liar we take dominion and authority over him we bind him we cast him to outer darkness and we loose the power of the Holy Ghost <laughs> but we have to cast down these imaginations <laughs> And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when obedience is fulfilled. The problem is, is we're not looking through the right eyes. We're looking through the eyes of the flesh. And so when a situation comes in our life, we grab a pill. We grab a bottle. We grab a joint. We change Boyfriends, we change girlfriends. We, I like it whenever something happens to us. The first thing we do is we call pastor. And then when pastor, if, if your pastor is like I was when I pastored, and still today as an evangelist what I tell people when they call, won't you just pray about it? Well, we don't like that. So then we call Mr. Bush. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we're in the church, we call a brother and a sister in the church. Oh, God, I'm going to get in something now. Can you believe all pastor told me to do? I had that said about me one time. Boy, I laughed. I laughed in their face. I'm not a pastor, so I just be bold. I'm just who I am. I laughed. I said, yeah, that's exactly what I told them to do, to pray about it. Because I didn't have the answer. But I sent them to the one that does. But they don't want to hear from me 